Hello, my name is Mark Durham, the Director of Clinical Education for Crosstex, a Cantel medical company. Today we're going to talk about cleaning, packaging, and sterilization of instruments. Our mission is dedicated to delivering innovative infection prevention and control for patients, caregivers, and other healthcare providers which improve outcomes and save lives. Our product categories and markets are in industrial, dental, and medical. Our medical categories we cover personal protective equipment, cleaning detergents and high-level disinfectants, equipment monitoring, biological indicators, sterilization pouches, and chemical indicators. So what is instrument reprocessing? Instrument reprocessing refers to the act of cleaning, decontaminating, and high-level disinfection or sterilization of reusable medical devices used on patients. As you can see in the bottom right hand chart, not all states are required to report HAIs, uh, but improperly reprocessed instruments have been documented by the CDC as one cause of HAIs or healthcare associated infections. So when it comes to best practice, compliance is very important. Best practice should be adhered to in any profession because they reflect the values of that profession. In healthcare, adherence to sterilization and high-level disinfection best practices ensure patient safety, as one of our greatest threats is associated with HAIs. In the U.S., it's estimated that 1 out of 25 patients contact at least one HAI during their visit to a healthcare facility. That's nearly 5,000 patients a day with over 300 deaths each day. As you'll see in this slide, there are over 190,000 practices, 928,600,000 physician office visits annually, and over 6,000 surgery centers, 25 million ASC procedures performed annually. All it takes is one infection control breach to put an organization in the headlines. And if you look to the left, you'll see uh, news that was put out based upon things that went wrong in ASCs and hospitals. And all it takes is one mistake and puts a hospital in jeopardy. So in 2015, a CDC advisory went out to all healthcare facilities instructing them to review their instrument reprocessing practices and ensure that they are monitoring their sterilizer performance routinely in accordance with industry standards. There's a focus on clinics and ASCs due to the increased number of procedures performed in outpatient settings. 30% of procedures performed in hospitals five years ago are now being performed outside of the hospital. So it's quite common now to see total knees and total hips done in an ASC. State health departments such as the AAAHC, the Joint Commission, and CMS have put an emphasis on surveying cleaning, disinfecting, and sterilization practices. In the U.S., medical device reprocessing best practices detailed in CDC guidelines for high-level disinfection and sterilization, AMI standards, AORN guidelines for perioperative practice, along with other documents such as SGNA, which focus on high-level disinfection of uh, GI scopes and endoscopes. With instrument reprocessing, there are seven recommended steps for reprocessing. First is point-of-use preparation. That would take place either in the office or in the operating room. Next would be transport, cleaning and inspection, packaging, sterilization, quality assurance, and storage and delivery. According to standards, instruments should be pre-cleaned to remove gross soil immediately after use. Instruments should be treated with an instrument cleaner according to the instrument or device manufacturer's recommendation prior to transport. Contaminated instruments should be can handled carefully using appropriate PPE or personal protective equipment to prevent infection and also to protect the employees. Contaminated devices should be placed in the sealed, leak-proof container displaying a biohazard symbol at point of use to prevent injuries or cross-contamination during transport to the processing area. For cleaning, it's important to make sure when you are cleaning that you're cleaning under the surface. So you can see the pictures on the right. Um, when you brush above the uh, water line, you actually can produce aerosols and contaminants that would normally not be affected if you were cleaning under the water. So it's important to make sure when you are cleaning that it's done under the surface of the water. 
Also want to make sure that when you are in decontam that you're wearing the appropriate PPE for either ma ma manually or mechanically cleaning instruments. Quick cleaning removes blood much easier and can minimize instrument staining, corrosion, or pitting. With cleaning, personal protective equipment is specialized clothing or equipment worn by an employee for protection against infectious materials. That would be an OSHA uh, issue. So it's very important to make sure that technicians are protected while cleaning. PPE is used in healthcare settings include a fluid resistant glove, uh, fluid resistant gowns, masks or respirators, goggles, splash shields, and shoe covers. Also when cleaning, you want to make sure that you're using approved cleaning solutions and cleaning brushes as commercial products not intended for use with medical devices as they can cause damage or limit the cleaning effectiveness. It's important to make sure certain brushes that you use are appropriate for proper size lumens and be careful with stainless steel brushes as they can also do damage to the passivation layer of the instruments and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Reusable brushes should be cleaned and dis disinfected at the end of each day. Single-use brushes should be disposed of immediately after use. In this next slide, you'll see some products on the right-hand side, like scouring powders and um, abrasive pads. They should not be used at all for cleaning surgical instruments. Surgical instruments have a passivation layer on them that keeps them protected. Once you start hitting them with abrasives, like you see in the picture, it can start to remove the passivation layer and cause damage to the instruments. After manually cleaning, thoroughly rinse instruments with tap water and ensure that all debris and detergent residue is removed. Rinsing should be performed in a separate clean sink or basin. Be sure to follow cleaning detergent manufacturer's instructions for the number of rinses to be performed. Certain instruments may require several rinses and always want to refer to the instrument manufacturer's IFU. In addition to manual cleaning, mechanical cleaning can be performed using an ultrasonic or under-the-counter washer uh, or washer disinfector. If mechanical cleaning instruments and scopes, be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for use when doing that. Each instrument should be inspected critically before and after cleaning to make sure that there's no debris or residual damage or uh, debris. Replace instruments as needed and never sterilize a dirty instrument. If it isn't clean, it can't be sterilized. For packaging, you want to make sure instrument packaging should be done in a clean, low contaminated area using FDA cleared products such as sterilization pouches, sterilization wraps, or sterilization containers. So as you can see in the picture to the right, there are pouches, wrap, and containment devices. With packaging, sterilization pouches are for packaging loose instruments in small lightweight items. These would be elevators, forceps, picks, stuff like that. You don't want to put heavy items into a peel pouch as it may rupture them. Paper plastic pouches allow you to see the contents and come with built-in adhesive strips for sealing. It's important to remove all excess air prior to sealing the pouch as it could make them rupture while they're being processed. For quality assurance, be sure to include a chemical indicator inside each pouch. Per CDC guidelines, this will verify sterilization parameters were met inside as well as outside of the pouch. This would monitor the time, temperature, and sterile in contact. To assist sterilization and drying, place pouches facing each other on dividers. So a lot of times people may place them flat, but pouches really should be laid on their side. This will help promote drying and sterilization efficacy. Sterilization wrap is ideal for packaging surgical kits, heavier devices that you would not put in a peel pouch. For sterility maintenance, be sure to use two layers of wrap per the industry standards and follow the manufacturer's clearance for packaging. So in the diagram below, it's showing sequential wrap. So in this case, an item would be placed on one wrap, it would be wrapped as you see in the picture, and then it would be wrapped again. There are some products out there that are two bound pieces of wrap, but it's most common to see the sequential wrap in uh, ASCs and in the dental area. For quality assurance, include a chemical indicator inside to verify the sterilant reach the inside of the package. Wrap in a way that allows 
sterile presentation and septic delivery uh, of the kit to the user. Saturated steam under pressure is one of the oldest methods used to sterilize medical instruments. The CDC recommends steam sterilization as the process of choice because it's efficient, fast, and inexpensive. There are other technologies such as ethylene oxide and hydrogen peroxide sterilization. These are not very commonly used on instruments that are used in an ASC. Usually those are used for items that are heat sensitive like cameras, drills, uh, power equipment, light cords, uh, such as that. Sterilization um, by heating distilled water under pressure, moist heat is created and rapidly kills microorganisms. Some of the common parameters are what you'll see below, but a lot of these devices, it depends on what the manufacturer tells us to do for sterilization purposes. With monitoring, CDC guidelines state every week, every load, every pack. So one thing that's important to know is how often are you testing your sterilizers? So what type of sterilizer monitoring is occurring? Sterilizers should be monitored with the appropriate mix of biological and chemical indicators on a daily and per pouch basis. So for biologicals, you want to test the sterilizer at least weekly. It's best to test daily because there's a lot that can happen from one week to another. Type 5 integrating indicator to monitor every load and steam chemical indicators to monitor every pack. So with the picture that you can see on the right, Top hand corner is the biological, uh, type 5 chemical indicator in the center, and then the pill pouch that has a built-in chemical indicator on the bottom right. Biological indicators provide users the highest level of sterility assurance and contain bacterial spores in a self-contained plastic vial. Sterilizers should be tested with the BI at least weekly, preferably daily. Daily testing helps offices that run their sterilizer frequently to identify sterilization failures sooner. The Spore View in-office biological indicator provides customers with test results in 24 hours. Testing is done by placing a BI or biological indicator inside of a peel pouch and running it along with the first load of the day. After processing, the biological indicator is then activated by crushing it um, on the side and then placing it into the incubator for 24 hours. You'll also see below that we need to make sure that biologicals are documented when they're planted and when they're read. So for tabletop sterilizers, the frequency should be uh, a type 5 indicator should be included with every sterilizer load, FDA cleared equivalent in performance to a biological indicator. The rationale for this is the highest level of sterility assurance and confirms that the sterilizers are working properly between weekly mon biological indicator tests and identifies sterilizer failures immediately also eliminates the release of the non-sterile instruments. So you can see here in the picture the class 5 indicator located inside the tabletop sterilizer. Here you will see the sterilizer monitoring starting kit comes with tape, biological block indicator, chemical indicators, and biological indicators, and a record book. With sterilizer monitoring, sterilization pouch is the most frequently used form of packaging in physician offices. Per CDC guidelines, a multi-variable indicator should be included in every pouch to verify parameters for sterilization, which would be the time, temperature, and steam have been met. Sterilization pouches with SureCheck sure -check technology come printed with an indicator um, on the inside and on the outside. This eliminates the need for a separate indicator strip, saving money and reducing time and processing errors. While sterilizers can do mechanically fail, operator error is the leading cause of sterilization failure. So that could be a cold start, the wrong cycle, overloading, or improperly packaging. With storage and delivery, sterile items should be stored in a manner that reduces potential for contamination. The shelf life of items is event-related and depends on the quality of the packaging, storage materials, and how the conditions are in the area where it's being stored. It's important instruments must be allowed to cool to room temperature before handling. Sterile packages should always be handled with care. Avoid dragging, crushing, bending, compressing, or puncturing, as this will compromise sterility. Be sure to inspect sterile packages before distributing. Do not use any pack that is damaged, wet, stained, or open. 
So it's important to infection prevention practices, including cleaning, packaging, sterilization of instruments, are points of emphasis for CDC. Our goal across Texas is to provide you with products and solutions that will improve best practice and reduce cost. We appreciate your support. Here you will see information that you can contact uh, Crosstex to receive a certificate. Thank you for your time and have a good day.